Anyway, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining for tonight's session. Uh, actually, this session tonight is a sequel of the last week's session. Diba, kung matatanda natin, yung ating topic last, last week was equipping the mind. Now, for, the, for tonight, our topic will be, is entitled Engaging the Mind. So, uh, we, equip, we equip ourselves last week through some knowledge, so through some uh, truth that we need to know and understand. And to, for tonight's session, we will be dealing with more practical concerns. Okay, so let me just give you a brief preliminary of what we discussed last, last week. So we, we said that we discussed two things last week. We said that we need to resist anti-intellectualism. Now, of course, as the word implies, it is against using the mind, exercising our mental faculties, yung tinatawag na gamitin ang ating mga kaisipan upang hamunin ito sa tamang uh, mga pagtuturo at ka kaalaman. So, uh, and we, we, we discuss things, how we need to resist it because it was a prevailing situation back then. Uh, if you would recall, we were using the text or the, the, the book by John Stott entitled entitled uh, Your Mind Matters, The Place of the Mind in the Christian Life. So this is basically our the book that we are, we are discussing and uh, we are expounding it and hopefully we can get information out of it. And this was what he said, 1972. This was uh, a result of a series of lectures he did and it came, uh, which came about, or which became a book after which uh, in our generation we are reading it so what was discussed back then is true even to our time kaya nga sinabi niya at the time resist the spirit of anti-intellectualism and and so because we need to be equipped we need to gain knowledge and there is we discuss the necessity of gaining knowledge because the mind is the greatest asset of every individual. Ang ating kaisipan, ang pinakamahalagang bahagi, kaya tayo nag-aaral sa college, eh. eh kung hindi natin kailangang dagdagan ng ating kaalaman, bakit pa tayo magpapakahirap umabot sa college? And even, for some of you, you might be pursuing post uh, baccalaureate studies, or masteral or doctoral studies in the future, because you need to increase your knowledge and learning. And that is why we are in school. But more than that, we need more knowledge, not only in our studies to educate ourselves, to prepare ourselves for our vocation, but more importantly, for the sake of our soul. Because man is a living soul, we need to understand what is happening around us. And we need to resist anti-intellectualism. Uh, kung napapansin niyo siguro ngayon, Ang example ko dyan ay yung Israel-Hamas war na nakikita natin is just how how ravaging the war is going on although may in-announce late uh, just a couple of hours ago that there, there might be a ceasefire because hostages will be released. But nevertheless, bagamat madugo ang gera na yan, mas madugo ang sa likod niya. Because there is that propaganda war going on, or there is that war uh, in the in the airwaves, in the internet, Israel proving its reason for going to war, and the other side proving that Israel is in the wrong. That's why all the all over the world it is being affected. We are all affected by what is going on with this war. So we need to equip ourselves with what is truth. Because truth is important for us to make decisions and for us to understand how we ought to make the right decision as we move along. And so last week, we discussed three things basically. We looked into the present 
uh, what we call the present manifestation. How do we find anti-intellectualism, both in the secular as well as in the religious or in the sacred realm? Nagbigay tayo ng mga halimbawa upang maintindihan natin, malaman natin, paano natin nakikita o nararanasan ang mga ganitong spirito ng anti-intellectualism. And after which, we said, we look into the principal means that we need to so that we can equip ourselves with the right uh, knowledge or the truth and it is to the word of God. But it is not enough that we have the word of God, we need the power or the means, the powerful means to be able to grasp and understand these things. And it is to the Holy Spirit. So yun ang ating pinag-usapan last week. But for now, our concern tonight is what are the ways expected out of us so that we may use the mind to engage the world. So ang concern natin is a mind to engage the world because each day we are engaging the world. If you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are engaging the world in the in a way that should be in line with what the Word of God says, not according to the standard of the Word. So we need, as we engage the Word, the world. How do we respond and use our mind accordingly? So ngayon titingnan natin yung ilang spheres. Ano yung spheres in the life? of a believer in the life of a person na kailangan mong gamitin ang iyong kaisipan as you engage the world based on the truth that you have. Apat na bagay ang titingnan natin. Okay? Uh, the spheres of Christian living will be worship, faith, holiness, and love. So, although maraming si, binanggit, may iba pang binanggit si John Stott, John, we will not be discussing everything. We will just be discussing these four spheres so that we would have an understanding and an, an idea how we are to engage the world in these spheres of our life. Okay? Let's go to the first. Worship. The question we need to ask in worship, if we are to make sense with our worship engaging with a mind engaged is is it a mindless worship or it is a mind engaging worship and the wrong aspect ang titingnan natin there is what we call the unbiblical uh, way of worshiping or the biblical way of worshiping now for the unbiblical we said there people resort to superstitious or to the uh, they make use of the emotions rather than the mind and many times they they go to the go to, go to the extent of being ritualistic rather than uh, making use of their mind to, to be engaged in the in the worship of their God and so one particular example that I can give you based on scriptures is, Apostle Paul, if you are familiar with the journey of Apostle Paul when he was uh, when he was called when he received the Macedonian call uh, in a dream perhaps anong ginawa doon? Pumunta ka rito sa amin, may naghikayat sa kanya, pumunta ka sa amin, tulungan mo kami. So he thought of it as a call from God for him to go and cross the sea towards Europe. Ang una niyang pinuntahan ay Philippi. Pagkatapos ng Philippi, na-persecute siya doon, pumunta siya sa Thessalonica, and then pumunta siya sa Berea, bago siya nakarating sa Athens. After Athens, Corinth. So, ano nangyari sa kanya sa Athens? If you are familiar in Acts, 6, uh, Acts 17, nabagabag si Pablo. According to that Acts 17.23, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. Ganon. Ang mga Athenians, sila ay mga marurunong. Mahilig sila sa debate. Mahilig sila sa pagkikipagtagisa ng ta talino. Meron silang lugar 
kung saan sila nagdidebate, nagdidiskusyon sa mga 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 bagong mga katuruan, kaalaman sa panahon na 'yon. But what was what did Paul say in Athens? The people were superstitious and because of their superstitious in order not to forget to a god na hindi nila masamba they created an image of a so-called god and labeled it to the unknown god para bang to whom it may concern kung para sa sa ating mga estudyante o, diba? so but paul thought of it as something uh, it grieved his heart being a missionary and that's why he introduced to them the god that he believed and that they were unable to think about or even learn for themselves. So, yun ang ginawa ni Pablo. So, the pagans worship an unknown God, but Paul, who knew the real God of the Bible, introduced the true God through his preaching of the word in Athens or yung kanyang Mars Hill Discourse na tinatawag. And so that is one example we have. But how about biblical worship? How does it look like? Now, for the for biblical worship, it is a worship that gives praise to the Lord, that instills, uh, that pursues the the glory of God. And if you would look into the worship, especially in the Old Testament language. One of those, or a couple of words, uh, or phrases that you would encounter, especially in the book of Psalm, Psalms, is praise the name of the Lord, ascribe glory to His name. Yun yung uri ng pagsamba sa mga salumang tipan, pagbibigay uh, kalwalatian sa Diyos, uh, pagpupuri, pagbibigay parangal sa Diyos ng lumang tipan, si Yahweh, as far as Israel was concerned and when they speak of the name it it tells us or it, it connotes to them who God is and what he has done for his people then the word name there connotes who their God is ang kanyang karater at ang kanyang ginawa para sa kanyang bayan at ang magandang isang example na makikita natin dito, ito sa three verses that we have here Psalm 104, 105, and 106 So, ito mga uh, mga awit o oh, uh, mga pag, pag uh, the, the book of Psalms are used in the worship of Old Testament, of the Old Testament church and even in, in our time many churches still use the Psalms in their worship, in singing praises to the Lord, or in in various ways, and look, we we will try to look in into these three chapters or three psalms. Psalm 104, which says, verse 24: "O Lord, how manifold are your works!" Ano ang sinasabi riyan sa Psalm 104? Pinapakita ang kadakilaan ng Dios sa kanyang paglilikha. Jan binabanggit sa Psalm 104 what God has done and created upang mamangha ang kanyang manalamba so that the people will understand and know for themselves who the God is. Psalm 105, in verse 8 says, He remembers His covenant forever. Anong sinasabi ng Psalm 105? Binabanggit riyan ang tipan ng Diyos sa Israel. Uh, sinasalay, sinasalaysay ng Diyos o ng salmista ang pagkilos ng Diyos dahil sa kanyang tipan sa kanyang bayan sa kanilang uh, pinagdaanan bilang bayan kung paano sila iningatan at ginabayan ng Diyos sa lahat ng kanilang paglalakbay simula pa ng mga patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob so pagdating sa Psalm 106 According to verse 44, Nevertheless, he looked upon their distress when he heard their, their cry. Now, if if you know the Old Testament, kung paano namuhay ang Israel, mga Israelita sa kabila ng katapatan ng Diyos, patuloy silang sumusuway, 
Ano pa? Ngunit patuloy silang hinahangot ng Diyos mula sa kanilang pagkalugmok dahil sa pagkahulog sa pagkakasama. And here in Psalm 106, it is a reminder to Israel how God has helped them out despite their sinfulness, despite their waywardness, parang paulit-ulit silang binabalik ng Diyos sa kanya, sa kanyang habag. According to His mercy and according to His grace. So the Old Testament here clearly tells us that the worship of God's people was not a mindless worship. They were engaged to think about who God is, how He created this world, how He made them, how He guided and spared them from trouble despite their sinfulness. So, ito yung isang hamon sa Israel upang ikayatin silang isiping mabuti kung paano sila pinagpala sa kabila ng kanilang katigasa ng ulo. So, it is not a mindless worship that the people in the Old Testament were engaged. They were made to think who God is who Yahweh was to them in their day-to-day -day life in every generation of the Israelites in the Old Testament. And this just, this just proves, this Psalms, the series of Psalms just proves God's faithfulness and that's why He deserves to be worshipped. Yun ang tinuturo, yun ang sinasabi ng, mga, mga, uh, ng mayakda ng awit upang magpuri, magpasalamat, magparangal sa Diyos. And so, how about New Testament? Well, New Testament is still the same. But let me just cite one text uh, uh, for for us in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unsuitful. Now, anong context nito? Anong sinasabi ni Pablo? Diba? When you in the New Testament, prayer and worship is not a thoughtless uh, exercise, but rather a, a mind engaging exercise of God's people. Uh, dito, isa sa mga problema ng Corinto ay yung tinatawag nating speaking in tongues. Uh, sinasabi ni Pablo, maganda yan, pero dapat may interpreter. Pero kung hindi na, hindi na ka, walang interpreter, it will not be helpful or edifying for the church, for God's people. So sinasabi ni Pablo, hindi tama na basta ka na lang magsasalita, ay hindi ito, hindi ito mga salitang hindi mo maintindihan. Okay? Hindi katulad ng mga ginagawa nila ngayon na bumubula yung bibig na tinatawag nila speaking in tongues. No. Uh, these were intelligible language, but for others, they, they do not understand it unless, unless somebody of, uh, who knows the language can interpret it for them. But, what happens? Paul here is saying to them, it is better for you not to use it. If it will not be helpful for the people and for others. So, ang sinasabi ni Pablo dyan, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So, ibig sabihin, there is this need to exercise even in our prayer and in our worship our minds because our minds should be uh, engaged in the worship of God's people. And what does it tell us? Christian worship is an intelligent response to God's self-revelation. Ganun na lamang ang pagkamangha ni Pablo. Kaya nga sinabi niya dyan sa Romans 11.33 Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgment and how inscrutable His ways. Nung natutunan niya ang, ang katotohanan ng kaligtasan dahil kay Kristo Jesus, ang mga katotohanan na kaya E, uh, isinugo ng Diyos Ama si Kristo upang mamatay para sa kaligtasan na makasalanan ganun ang kanyang pagkamangha and that's why he he raises up his heart and voice to praise God oh how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways 
It is the response of a person who was engaged, whose mind was engaged because of the truth of what uh, God has bestowed upon him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, what should it remind us also? We need to be beware, beware of undevotional theology. One theologian said this, uh, paraphrase lang natin, beware of undevotional theology and untheological devotion. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Meron ko ngang kaalaman, meron kang teolohiya, pero ito hindi na mumunga sa isang uri ng pagsamba at pamumuhay ayon sa katotohan ng iyong nalaman. O, ma pwede kang mahulog sa kabila na meron kang uh, debosyon na hindi ayon sa kaalaman, katotohanan. Pwede kang mahulog sa dalawang ito na hindi dapat mangyari. You should not uh, go into two extremes wherein you have a devotion not based on knowledge, not based on truth, or meron kang uh, tamang the theology, tamang kaalaman patungkol kay sa Diyos, ngunit wala namang uri ng pamumuhay at pagsamba ayon sa nararapat para sa Diyos na yan. Kaya ano, ano ang reminder nito sa atin? Diba? What should, because our worship should be engaged or should be uh, mind engaging. Ganun bagay ang, ang balansin natin as a reminder. It demands physical and mental preparedness in order for the mind to be engaged to attain such a uh, thing. Ano nangyari dyan sa Acts 20? Nakatulog si Eutychus. Ano nangyari sa kanya? Nahulog. Namatay. Dahil sa so marahil, so sobrang pagod o oh, marahil hindi siya handa, hindi natin alam. Pero delikado, pag natutulog tayo, pag merong pag-aaral, pag pangangaral, ay eh baka mababok yung ulo natin. Kailangan maging alerto tayo. But on the other hand, what does Acts 17 tells us? It tells us of the attitude of the Bereans. Ito lang ang lugar kung saan binanggit ang mga Bereans. Remember, remember Paul's journey bago dumating siya sa Athens? Dumaan siya sa Berea. Anong sinabi dyan sa, sa Acts 17? Now, these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica for they received the word with all eagerness examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Anong ginawa nila? They were eager. At pangalawa, they examined the scriptures. Isipin nyo. Who was teaching them? Paul. Diba? He was the, firm, the foremost of teachers during their, that time. Pero anong ginawa nila? Hindi lang sila oo ng oo sa sinabi ni Pablo. What did they do? They examined the scriptures to say, to, to, uh, to, and look at it whether it was so. Tama ba si Pablo? Ito mo nga ba ang sinasabi ng scriptures? Ang kasulatan, ayon kay Pablo. So, this is the kind of attitude, meaning they engage their mind. Ang uri ng kanilang pagsamba as ay ginagamit ang kaisipan, hindi lang emosyon. Hindi lang nagpa sumunod sa agos. They so the worship of God's people ought to be mind-engaging, not a mindless. And that is one observation John Scott saw. Because many worship without engaging their mind because they rejected the intellectual aspect of worship. Secondly, tingnan natin yung isang pangalawang sphere, ang tinatawag natin faith. The question we need to ask, is it an, an illogical or a logical faith? Diba? So let, let's look at two things, the negative side of it. And perhaps one popular book, uh, when I was in college back then, 1980s, I graduated ako, 80s, 86, eh, 1980s, we used to give tracks written by the author of this book, Dr. 
uh, Norman Vincent Peale, unbeliever pa ako noon, unknowingly, we distributed his writings because it's in, in, in some aspects, it, it helped other people. But now, go looking back, there's something wrong with the, with the text because the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, doesn't explain faith in the biblical sense. His faith is relative kind of faith. His faith is equated into faith in man, faith in oneself, belief in oneself, rather than faith in the true God. Now, uh, according to John Stark, perhaps in the latter days of the life of Dr. Peel, he might have changed his position, but we don't know in reality. But what is truthful or what is what was what happened was this book became popular and many claim or embrace what he was teaching which is not a sound truth based on what faith is all about isipin mo lang sa chapter 1 ang title niya believe in yourself chapter 7 expect the best and set it so it is man centered rather than god centered Biblical faith is faith in Christ himself, not in man. And that's the problem. And that's the, the issue of faith. It is not uh, it is not credulity or innocent or naive. Ang tunay na pananampalataya ay hindi uh, para bang uh, Tinatawag natin innocent, eh, hindi iniisip ang kanyang pinapaniwalaan. It is rather essentially reasonable because true faith looks into the character and the promise of God. It holds to the God who has promised according to his char character as he has revealed himself in scriptures. In other words, True faith is not just plain and simple optimism. May mga taong, di ba, very positive, very optimistic. It is good. But that is not biblical faith. It is not positive mental attitude or positive thinking or even self-confidence as Peel and others uh, propound or tell us that that is the kind of attitude but rather the positive side to biblical faith is confident trust in God not despair paano natin anong halimbawa niyan uh, one example John Stuff gives us is in 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6 ang sabi riyan sa huling part uh, ang sabi riyan and David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him Anong nangyari dito? When uh, when Ziklag was was uh, 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 overrun by the Amalekites, they took away their wives, their children, and and uh, burned the place. And when David and his men came back, nakita nila kung gaano uh, kalaki yung destruction at kinangay ang kanilang mga asawa't anak. Similar to what happened to uh, when the Hamas people took away the children, the old, and the women and men when they raided the southern part of Israel. Similar to that. So, ano nangyari? They were so distressed. And we are told there, because all the people were bitter in soul, each, of his, each for his sons and daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Anong ginawa ni David? Instead of people stoning him, saan humugod ng lakas si David? Nang uh, pagpasa? Sa kanyang Diyos. Because he knew his God. His God has promised to protect to pursue his covenant with him and his nation. And that was his hope. hope. Ang kanyang Diyos, hindi sa kanyang sarili. And that is why there we, we, we see 
that uh, uh, in, in the New Testament we find there a, a verse, Romans 10, 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For David, his salvation was in the God who was promised, who entered into a covenant with him and in the nation of Israel. In the New Testament, we are told according to Romans 10 verse 9, according to Paul, for uh, you will be saved if you believe and trust with all, within your, uh, with all your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Yun ang pag-asa ng isang makasalanan ayon sa bagong tipan. Ayon sa sinabi dyan ni Pablo sa Romans 10 and verse 9. Hindi sa sarili. Tulad na sinabi ni Paul, uh, ni Phil, Dr. Phil, do not trust uh, trusting in yourself. That is not true faith. That is not true biblical faith. Is trusting in the Son of God who gave His life as a ransom for your sin and my sin. Your only hope and my hope is not in our positive thinking, not in our uh, resolve, not in our self-confidence, but in our trust in what Jesus Christ did in the, on the, that lonely cross more than 2,000 years ago. And that is why uh, according to according to Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones when in his exposition of Matthew 6 and verse 30 uh, that this is what he said faith according to our Lord's teaching in this paragraph is primarily thinking and the whole trouble with a man of little faith is that he does not think and he, he goes on that is the essence of worry that it is not thought that is the absence of thought a failure to think bakit daw nahuhulog sa pagkabalisa ang tao hindi na ginagamit ang isip niya kung anong sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Umaasa sa sa kanyang sariling karunungan, lakas, kaalaman, kaysa umasa sa sinasabi totoong salita ng Diyos na pinangako, lalo na sa kanyang anak. Again, for God's people, you should not fall into it. You should make use of your mind. You have to think. But And so, this reminds us of two things. For believers, it reminds us that the Lord's Supper was ordained for the purpose that every man eating and drinking should remember that Christ died for him. Dalawang ordinance or sacrament ang iniwan ng Diyos sa kanyang iglesia. Baptism and Lord's Supper. Lord's Supper is the continuing mark. And bakit binigay ng Diyos siya? Upang palalahanan tayo. Upang ipaalala sa atin na hindi ikaw ang namatay para sa iyong kasalanan. Somebody died for you so that through His death, you will be saved. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ito yung isang paalala ng ang ating pag-asa ay nakasalalay hindi sa ating sarili, sa ating relihiyon kundi dahil sa Panginoong Jesus lamang. And for the and that is a continuing reminder that you should place in your mind if you are a child of God. But for the unbeliever, it is a reminder also for you, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. Kung ikay tatawag sa Panginoong Jesus sa uh, pagsisisi at pananampalataya may kaligtasan there is salvation if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ kaya ito yung muling paalala kung hindi mo pa kilala ang Panginoong Jesus if you do still do not have that personal relationship with Christ as your Lord and Savior this is a reminder for you this is a reminder that there's hope in 
it, 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 uh, in your life despite the fact that you are under the wrath of God according to the word of God. Ikaw ay nasa ilalim ng puot ng Diyos. Subalit may pag-asa. At ito yung sinasabi. Kung ikaw ay tatawag ng may pananampalataya sa Panginoon Jesus, may kaligtasan para sa isang nagkakasala. And that is why faith or uh, faith is has three components basically. It is knowledge, it is noticia, ascensus, fiducia. Uh, knowledge, conviction, and belief. Because if you come to know Christ in uh, along this line, along this truth, salvation is possible for a sinner like you and me. The third one we need to look into is holiness. And that the question that we need to ask is, is it, is it self-pleasing or God-pleasing? <coughs> Excuse me. And what does it mean? According to John 8 verse 32, the truth will set you free. The truth that God has revealed because of Christ is the reason we can be freed from the bondage of sin. This is for all. This is for every sinner. Paano tayo mapapalaya sa uh, bilang bi, uh, bilang nasa ta, nasa poder o sabi natin sa kapangyarihan ng kasalanan? It is only based on the truth. And the truth is that Christ died so that we who are, who, who are sinners can be freed from the slavery of our sin and thus judgment before God. So this tells us two things. What should, what should we be? As God's people, an on hamo nito? We need to lead a life worthy of Him, pleasing Him, because that is what He desires for His people. Ang, ang uri ng ating buhay at pamumuhay ay dapat ayon sa kawangis ni Kristo, ayon sa kabanala na, na ninanais ng Diyos. And what is the first principle that we need to understand of, of all sin? It is the deceit of the mind. Our mind is is in this way. That's why we fall into sin. Our minds are have, are deceived. That's why we do not choose God. We choose to sin. Diba? If you are familiar with the account in Luke 4, verses 1 to 13, ano nangyari dito sa account na ito? When Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, when Adam was tempted by the devil, he fell. When Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, how did he respond? Titignan natin ang ilang talata, verses 4, 8, and 12. And this is what Jesus answered every time the devil tried to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 4, and Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Again, in verse 8, And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and, in, and him only shall you serve. And verse 12, And Jesus answered him, It is said, or another way of saying, It is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So what is what is the Lord Jesus Christ telling us there? That is the standard. Kung anong sinulat ng Diyos, kung anong sinabi ng Diyos, yan ang dapat pamantayan at susundin natin. Holiness is obeying what God said. In other words, it is again engaging the mind. What pleases God? 
hindi what pleases us or other people. It is not just knowing, but setting the mind. Victory against sin or against sinning starts at the mind. When you resolve to do it by the grace of God, not to follow the ways of the world or the ways of the evil one, do nag-uumpisa ang iyong tagumpay. Subalit, kung bumigay ang isip, then you are bound to fall. And that is why Paul said in Philippians 4.8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, what does he say? Think about these things. Yung ating kaisipan ay mahalaga. It has to think of lofty things which God has ordained for His people to think and do. Self-control is primarily mind control. And that is why, again, pag sinasabi ni Pablo, I want you to know. Sa kanyang pagtuturo, palagi niyang binabangit yan, I want you to know. Di ba sa mga klase natin, sinasabi ng ating professor, gusto kong maintindihan mo. Gusto mo gusto, gusto kong maunawaan mo. If that is true sa ating pag-aaral secular, the same is true in the spiritual realm. Yun ang pagtuturo ng salita ng Panginoon. I want you to know this is the thing. These are the things that you ought to do. We need to feed our mind because if we fail to feed our mind, then we would be an easy prey to the temptations of the world. But secondly, if you are a Christian, think of what you are, you already are. Ang sabi dyan, do not be ignorant. Don't you know? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Ito yung katatayuan ng isang kristyano. Meron kang kapangyarihan laban sa tukso, laban sa panlilinlang ng jablo o ng mundo. So, the power in you is greater than the power outside of you. That is your situation. That is how you stand before God through the grace that He has granted you in Christ Jesus. And you have the Holy Spirit that will enable you to fight against the temptations of this world. So the goal is not just to feel ashamed, but to recall the truth about your identity in Christ Jesus. Ayan ang sinabi ni James uh, 2. What God, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works Verse 17, so also faith by itself, if, if it does not have works, is dead. Of course, ang sinasabi ni James John is that the, a true believer lives his faith. How can you live on your faith if you do not, okay, if you do not put, uh, if you do not uh, entrust yourself upon the power of the Holy Spirit, within you. You cannot do things on your own, but to the power of God, to the grace of God, to the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why, let the truth we know grip our minds and mold our character. You are what you are by the grace of God. You are what you are because of what you believe. If that is what you believe based on the truth, then that should be or that ought to be your pursuit in life, in your character, in your dealing, in your attitude, because you were redeemed by the precious blood 
of the Lamb. And finally, let's look into the fourth sphere, love. And so let's ask the question, is it self-love or biblical love? Again, this calls for a mind engaged because it is, it is a mind that has been equipped. So how, how does one respond out of love? Firstly, oh well, according to Matt, uh, in according to Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40, we find here the two great commands: love for God and love for neighbor. Because the tendency of man is to indulge in oneself, to pursue only oneself rather than others, and that is why this commandment was given by the Lord Jesus Christ to remind his people but also to tell the world that this is the kind of love that must uh, draw, be drawn out from God's people and first thing is the way we share and we serve God we bear witness of the gospel or what we call evangelism and we serve and minister to others because out of love it is it becomes it becomes our desire to follow who what Christ did remember the Lord Jesus Christ I came not to be served but to serve and in the same way God's people ought to serve the world or his people in the church and those who need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you share the truth and you serve those who are in need. Because that was basically what Christ did as he lived. But secondly, let us look into the, the relationship between knowledge and love. Lo the problem is knowledge can be har harsh. And that is why it needs sensitivity which love can give. Anong sabi ni Pablo sa 1 Corinthians 8.1? We know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge pops up, but love builds up. Diba? Minsan, pag may alam tayo, lumalaki yung ulo natin, akala natin tayo ng pinakamagaling. Wala na tayong kuwang upang unawangin, intindihin yung iba. Because we are full of knowledge. We think we are the best person. And lalo na ngayon, it's, it's, uh, because we can easily search whatever information we want in the internet. Minsan yung mga kabataan, mas magaling pa sila sa mga magulang. Hindi mo alam yan, tatay, inay. And because, because of what we have now, but it should not make our heads swell, but rather the opposite should be our attitude. We should be humble that we know lots because that knowledge is not out of us. It is not from us. It is because of the God who has given us knowledge. But what is Paul saying here? But we need to be sensitive with only love. And that, that is why in 1 Corinthians 13, ito yung tinatawag natin love chapter, it says in verse 4 and 5, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. And all the other stuff that you can read there. Meaning, as what we are always reminded by our pastor, a multiplier is love. Kahit anong karunungan meron ka, kahit anong kapangyarihan, kakayanan meron ka, kung walang pag-ibig. Diba? Marami yung mga BS math dito. Any number, how huge that number may be, multiplied by zero, anong resulta? Zero. The zero, kung wala kang pag-ibig, walang silbi yan. So, mahalaga ang pag-ibig. Why? Because God never meant knowledge as an end in itself, 
but rather a means to an end. Knowledge is not the end. Your knowledge, that the knowledge that you will be gaining in your pursuit, in your academic uh, vocation now, is not the end in itself. It is a means for you to earn or to have a good job when you graduate college. It is a means for you to be of, of service to others in your community, for your family. But eventually, it is a means for you to give glory and honor to God. And so, to conclude, an engaged mind translates one's knowledge into appropriate behavior. It is one of our solemn responsibility. Knowledge is important. An engaged mind is essential or necessary. And that is why as young as you are, you need to translate whatever your knowledge you have into the appropriate behavior that, 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 that God wants and desires for you to have. Because if you are a believer, it is a solemn responsibility that you have before God. And that is why your knowledge in your vocation is not just essential, but your knowledge of the truth from the Word of God is important for your life in this world. And I hope and pray that you will take hold of this truth for the sake of your soul and for the good of others to God's glory. Thank you and good evening. Now, uh, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Good evening, folks. Um, not so much a question, more of um, sharing something that has uh, recently May naman ko akong video essay um, sa YouTube. Uh, it was a video essay on like, the churches. And yung isa pong point, like, na mentioned dun ay yung tele-evangelist, um, Benny Hinn. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard of him. He's known for, quote-unquote, performing miracles. Um, which, I don't know, parang sabi, like, the person who um, made the video essay said na, hindi yan totoo na parang malabang pain actors lang yun. But from what I know, like, sa sobrang dami na he's uh, performed miracles on, I don't think na they would go to the effort of paying all of those people. So, siguro yung isa ito doon ay yung na-mention dito sa first point na emotions. Kasi, in a group that big, ano, especially with um, the way many preachers and mega churches, um, na I know, their preaching is closer to motivational speaking than the preaching I have grown up knowing says, I know, the church would not then. And, um, you know, with that, it's very easy for people's emotions to run high. Ano, and parang bar their practical thinking, which can cause a placebo effect. Which, not quote me on this one, sir. I'm not, I don't study psychology and I don't plan to, but yun na po. I feel like it really just goes to show how strong your emotions can affect you, which is why yun na, it's, it should not be the foremost. Uh, in worship, rather the uh, logical thinking and um, intelligence and knowledge of the Word of God and the Word should proceed everything in during worship. Yeah, thank you for that observation and uh, thoughts or even comment, okay. Rebecca. Well. Benny Hinn is one of the so-called health and wealth prosperity gospel preachers in the U.S. 
and uh, well, I know him because uh, because uh, we, we of course we studied uh, we studied about those kinds of preachers and teachers of the word. They may have a word or two taken from uh, the Bible, but more often than not, uh, when they expound the scriptures, they expound it. Uh, they expound it not faithful to the text that they are like what you said, uh, like what you what you have been hearing from the church. They become motivational speakers, but more importantly, they become uh, what what we are told. We, uh, they lead people astray from the truth, and most often their preaching will uh, will erode into either giving or a healing aspect. Meaning, if you do, if you are not healed, it is because you lack faith, and that's not always the case. If you are poor is because you fail, uh, you fail to serve and honor God in the way you give. And that's a sad thing because if you look at their lifestyle, they live lavishly at the expense of the people whom they serve. And that is not the way Christ lived in this world. He came to serve, not to be served. He came as an ordinary person, denying himself of the luxuries of, of, that, of, of his time in order that at the right time he would die on the cross for the redemption of sinners like you and me through his death on the cross. And, and uh, yeah, maybe people embrace what he said not all of them are really uh, paid as what others say or stage but what is important is what they teach and that's why what we are emphasizing here is that true worship is mind engaging not emotion emotions follow because of the truth that you embrace and believe upon Diba, yung mamamangha ka dahil naunawaan mo yung katotohanan ka at kilala ng Diyos. And you will be, you will be amazed in the, at the goodness, the mercy, and the faithfulness of God. And that your emotions will be carried in the kind of worship that is acceptable before God. Not according to the acceptability of, acceptability of man. Okay, thank you for that observation. Any other question? Tanong lang ako dun sa positive thinking. Uh, when, is it just for, is it just a precaution against uh, the exercise of faith? O pwede ba yung, since you may hear probably some, I think young people, uh, say for example, if uh, they're playing soccer, that's called gold, that's called gold. And of course, I visualize that uh, I'll be able to do this or if I play basketball, I'll be able to uh, I'll be the highest pointer. I just don't know if for the students, uh, I'll be the top catcher in the exam, a positive thinking. Oh, is it just confined to uh, the spiritual realm or can I do it also? Can I do it? in that spiritual aspect of my life, you know, it's a uh, campaign sport, so I'm a student. Yeah, uh, well, for John Stott, when he looked, when he checked that, when he discussed that book, or uh, quickly in his, in his, uh, in this article, or in this, in this specific book that he wrote, uh, he looked, he looked into the positive side of it, you know? Yung positive thinking can help you in many ways, in, a, in practical ways. But what the danger that uh, uh, John Stuck uh, looked into was that it, it becomes now the source of faith or 
replacement of faith of a person. So, the um, connotation niya is that faith is just like faith in oneself or confidence in oneself is just like faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it becomes it becomes faith in one's own ability, strength, capability, or capacity. But biblical faith is faith in whom? And for what reason? Faith, true biblical faith is in a person, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is grounded on the fact that Christ died on the cross and that when you cast yourself upon Him, upon Him in mercy, to, uh, to the grace that he, all, he offers to His death on the cross, there is now salvation, which is the greatest problem man has between, before his God. Because under we are all under God's wrath. And under God's wrath means we are condemned in our sin. And because of that legal status we have under God, our only hope is not positive thinking, is not self-confidence. Our hope rests upon the mercy of God Himself in Christ. So no amount of positive thinking can help you bail you out from the path towards hell. Hindi, hindi ka pwedeng hanguin sa daan patungo sa impyerno sa pamamagitan ng iyong positibong pag-iisip. Ang katotohanan ay ikay nasa ilalim ng buot ng Diyos. Kaya ang kailangan natin ay pananampalataya saan? Hindi sa sarili, kundi sa anak ng Diyos na isinugo ng Ama upang mamatay sa krus, maging kahalili sa halip na tayo upang magkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, kaligtasan sa ating pananampalataya sa Kanya, sa Kanyang ginawa na minsan sakripisyo sa krus. And no amount of positive thinking can help you. So that is the danger. May, may puwang sa positive thinking in some other aspects. Pero I, I, I doubt kung hindi ka mag-aral, positive thinking ka lang, ipapasa ka sa exam. Of course, you might be successful in one or two dahil na-champ na, na siguro sa inaral mo before ang naging exam, pero that will not hold down forever. So huwag mong iasa sa positive thinking na mag-aral kang mabuti. Ganun din, ganun din sa iyong kaligtasan umasa ka sa Panginoon Yesus para sa iyong kaligtasan. Good evening po. Uh, very prevalent po to today's society, especially for unbelievers and even those who claim to be believers, pero yung, ano yung concept ng trust issue. Uh, regarding trust issue, uh, paano po mapapaintindi ng isang mananampalataya yung uh, you're ministering to them out of love sa nabanggit kanina? And ano, yung parang, ano po yung kumbaga armas ng mananampalataya against trust issue? Uh, siguro uh, to answer that question I let's balikan natin ulit yung uh, issue of the greatest problem of man it is alienated from God diba uh, we, we cannot according to the word of God we cannot we do not have hope or we are, we are all hopeless and helpless apart from God's grace, upon, upon the goodness and mercy of God. So, ibig sabihin, uh, if we trust in our own ability or man's ability or anyone's, any other means ordained by God o itinalaga ng Diyos, wala tayong pag-asa. Pero, kung umasa tayo ayon sa kanyang itinalaga ayon sa kanyang paraan ayon sa kanyang sinabi na katotohanan 
sa salita ng Panginoon. Pwede mo ilagap ang iyong sariling uh, up, uh, ang iyong sariling kaisipan at karunungan na magtiwala sa inilaan ng Diyos para sa iyong trust means, uh, for example, when we were young, little children, pag kumakapit tayo sa ating mga magulang, tatawid tayo sa, sa daan. Diba? Wala tayong pakialam eh. Kasi nakakapit ako sa tatay o nanay ko. Tiwala ako na makakatawid ako sa pagtawid sa daan. Pero may tiwala tayo kahit anong kung nasa uh, hawak kamay natin ang ating mga magulang, we feel safe because we trust our parents that they will not do or wish ill for us. And that's a childlike trust and faith in his or her parents. G- ganun din sa salita ng Panginoon. We trust God for who He is and what He has done. That's why we can entrust ourselves and even uh, and even not to worry about or anything possible because we trust God for who He is and what He has done. He has said it. He has made true to His word. That's why kung alam natin yung salita ng Panginoon, the Old Testament was the history, was uh, the outworking of God's plan and purpose in, the old, uh, in history until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was which the Old Testament looked forward to and with the New Testament uh, documented through Christ's death on the cross, then we can trust God for His truth. Because He has said it and He has fulfilled it, now looking back, we can trust that God remained true to His promise and we can rest our case sa Kanya. Does it make sense? Or may follow up? Okay. Okay. Any other question or thought? Um, question for the boys. When we deal with God's self evident or whatever you find in the Bible concerning God, or whether it's about um, how He saves people, like in terms of the issue of uh, human responsibility, because God's sovereignty, or in terms of what He has done in the past, such as sometimes He has commanded that uh, even women and children will be destroyed in certain cities, for example. Uh, like in the conquest of Canaan, um, or uh, things like miracles or even the Trinity. How do you use your mind in worshiping God when you deal with concepts that sometimes are either illogical or beyond comprehension, or sometimes counter to certain uh, intuitive norms? So, yeah. Or your mind blowing stuff. Now we are told in Deuteronomy that God has revealed 29, 29, if I'm not mistaken, that God has revealed the things that that we can hold on to and trust. I mean, we have enough evidence of God, his goodness, of the truth that we can believe about him. But those who are beyond uh, maybe it blows our mind that we cannot have, we have difficulty grasping. That is where faith comes. That is where we can trust ourselves upon God because if He was faithful in uh, what He has revealed to us plainly and simply, and in our experience, we experience the goodness and mercy of God in practical ways, then we can entrust those uh, difficult, unimaginable, and perhaps improbable things that we can think of on God Himself. But of course, we we do not want to deal with those mind-boggling things. What is important is what He has said and what we have uh, experience and what he has revealed to us when they are uh, when they are truthful and faithful that is enough reason for us to put our trust and faith in God himself 
Kasi kasi nahuhulog tayo sa mga kamangha-mangha na we question or we we pry into the things or issues which are beyond and we fail to acknowledge God for the simple ordinary things which we experience each day and which are the real evidence of God's goodness and mercy in our lives and that those things are enough for us to honor God and worship Him.